welcome to the junior varsity game. We join in the middle of a pretty big performance here. 60-60 here, not just in overtime, they're in second overtime. BW is able to tie it up during regulation with a big three-pointer. Yeah, unfortunately, we weren't able to push any more points across the board. But this game will get started in double overtime. Obviously, that means a delay for the varsity team. You can see many of the members standing there behind the junior varsity bench ready to get going. BW will get a quick rush out. They put a bucket up, but no good. They'll still recover and keep hold. Puts up this shot and it's in. 62 to 60 now. This has been a very lively crowd from the moment I stepped in here around the fourth quarter. The things are still very tight and very close. And that three to tie things up really reinvigorated the crowd. Tricky spot now. He passes it off. He runs on up to the bucket and he'll sink it. And this game ties back up at 62 apiece. I think for the next token man. He puts this one up, but it's blocked. He will luckily recover. And that shot is up, no good. PW still manages to recover. And a whistle is thrown on William Tennant. DW will go up to the free throw line. These extra points could be a really big difference in preventing a third overtime. First shot's up, no good. DW will try again. Tie game, so they'll be able to take a one point lead if they make this. This one's up, and it's no good again. William Pennant quickly recovers, but PW takes it away only for William Pennant to take it right back on a false pass. And that ball is kicked away from William Pennant, and it's given back to the PW Colonials. a big call going their way. 1.30 to go here, second overtime. He runs on up to the bucket. He puts this one up, no good. William Tennant is able to recover, but they'll get to him quickly. for PW. Tried to steal that one away, but no good. William Tennant still has it. He goes up to the basket, looking for open space or an open man. He finds this guy. He puts this one up, and he sinks a three with 40 seconds to go. Clock counting down for PW now. In need of a big three-pointer for a quick rally. There's the three, it's up and it's good! It's good with 20 seconds to go! This game keeps ticking along! This has been one of the best games we have witnessed here for boys basketball. And to think, there's another one right after this. Six and a half seconds to go as a timeout is called. PW looked sunk when William Tennant got that three-pointer, but they responded right back, just like you did earlier. What's up, Mr. I have to start recording this game. It's are on second overtime right now. 20 seconds left, or like 30 seconds left, William Tennant puts in a three, and well, it's gone. 20 seconds left, they put in the three. Hi, how are you? Wow, this game's crazy. 
crazy. Yeah, I mean, and I think there's another game right after this. William Tennant has returned back to the court. PW is about to disperse from their huddle. And there they slowly stream back in. So William Tennant will have the ball. Six and a half seconds left. Defense is crucial here for PW. Quick shot is up and it's no good. PW will try to recover, but they fumble it away. 0.3 seconds left to go as we look on the verge of three overtimes. Unless PW can rattle off what would be a magnificent 0.3 second game winning shot would certainly be something unprecedented in any league, in any level of basketball. But what a moment that would be. It had to an already great game. PW will be last to split. They've added an extra second on the clock, so PW will have a little bit more time to work with still. Just under one and a half seconds. Not much left to go here for PW. They'll still start all the way back on William Tennant's territory, which would mean an unprecedented, almost full court shot if they want to win this right here. But for now, we look on the brink of third overtime. So here's PW's plan. They pass it. Here's a big shot up. Oh, man. That gets stuck up there. And that will be the way we transition to a third overtime as Lincoln Sharp from the varsity team able to knock it down. So their game gets to wait just a few minutes longer for what may be one of the greatest games we have recorded here. And we've only recorded the second overtime so far. The one I had last time was a little longer, but this was the only one I could get to work, so. Here we are, triple overtime now. 65 all. We'll see if this finish is just as good as the other two overtimes. PW, or William Penner, at 40 seconds to go. They managed to put up a humongous three. Both all over for PW, but with 20 seconds left to go, they responded by putting up another big three. And then their miracle 1.3 second shot managed to get it stuck in between the little score clock up there in the net. Lincoln Sharp had to go on a rescue mission, knocking it down with another ball. Timeout has been called already. We're 15 seconds in. So you know, a lot more timeouts here in double overtime. This has been 
quite the game. Boy, two overtimes, too. We got to the second one when we started recording. This is one of those games that commands if you broadcast. Both teams return to the court here. 2.44 on the clock here in triple overtime. We'll see what happens if they can get to a quadruple overtime. William Pennant goes up for a quick shot. No good. BW now has the ball. Now looking for an open man. Spot here. William Tennant playing good defense, but BW able to break through. He puts it up, and it's no good. Recovered by the Colonials, and this one will be wrestled. And it looks like William Tennant will win the battle here. 2.05 to go now. William Tennant will go to the free throw line with two minutes to go. They'd like to make both here and increase their odds. PW crowd is getting loud. They're trying to throw him off his rhythm. First shot is up, and it's good. And so William Tennant will jump out there 66 to 65 now. That won't deter from the crowd here. Overrated chant, I believe. In the JV game, it's brutal, but he sinks the second shot. So DW will need to respond. They have two minutes to do so. But William Tennant has proven that they can play some very good defense. This takes the right guy. The right time frame. He puts up a three. No good. And William Tennant will be able to get this ball back. Need some big defense here. PW can't afford to give up another basket with almost a minute to go now. William Tennant can't afford to stall. Remember, no shot clock here. And that one is called out. DW will get the ball here with one minute and four seconds to go. They need a basket. No in-betweens, whether it's two free throws, a three-pointer, whatever it takes to tie this game up. William Tennant is aware of that. They've sharpened up their defense already performed very well in the face of adversity, but the Colonials have managed as well. That's all it's blown here. And uh, I timeout was called. 48 seconds to go here. The Colonials looking to at least tie this. They could potentially send it to quadruple overtime. Something that I cannot imagine has happened very often in PW history. The JV team, some members are still out there on the bench to support of the junior varsity team. Some of the varsity members on the bench, some of them I think they were in the auxiliary gym. If you've been in gym class, you know that's the smaller gym on the side. We might play a couple games there while the advanced class gets to work in. Well, PW gets the ball here with 48 seconds to go. They just need a basket to tie this game up and keep their hopes alive. 
Biggest 40 seconds for PW so far this year. They can kill some time, but they really don't have that much to work with. And he puts this one up, and a foul is called. And that one looks like the O'Reilly on Kenny. No free throw attempt, but they will retain possession of the ball, which is arguably the most important part of the game right now for PW. They just need to find that open spot. Charges to the basket. He puts up a shot and it just misses. And a whistle is blown for William Bennett. With 12.6 seconds, they'll be able to take the ball back to their end. This may sink PW here. If William Tennant scores both of their shots, the comeback would most likely be ruled out of the books. Sinking one or none means that PW could come back with a miraculous shot. PW crowd comes to life, and the first shot misses. Hope is still alive for PW. It remains thin, but not out. They'll try to increase their odds here. Here goes the crowd. And they drain this one. 68-65 with 12.6 seconds to go. Plymouth White Marsh now will need a big shot. They've been able to get a couple big threes that have allowed them to stay in this game for as long as they have. But now they face serious adversity with less than 15 seconds to go and another miracle three needed. You have to wonder if being able to capitalize in some situations earlier would have helped them out. They now rely on a lot of luck and a lot of skill to get them through this one. 7.15, we would usually be wrapping up the first quarter in the middle of the second quarter for the, J for the varsity game, excuse me. Of course, this game's taken a bit of a twist and triple overtime. BW not out of this, but would need a miraculous shot. While they've been good at that so far, it remains to be seen just how much they can tempt fate. So here we go, starting back on William Tennant's side. PW will get the ball as the whistle is about to blow. PW inbounds the pass. They head back quickly, knowing they need a three right now. And a whistle gets blown. A lot of stop and go, stop and go here. And both William Tennant and PW understand a three pointer is what separates them from quadruple overtime and bringing an end to an already incredible game. Both teams will talk it out. Buzzer no. blows, William Tennant breaks from the huddle. PW stays in theirs to talk things out a little longer. And the ref to be heading over to remind them. There goes the buzzer, so PW will break from their huddle. 7.9 seconds to go. Needs a three-pointer badly. Gets the pass off, he drops it, but he manages to get it back. He puts up a big three, no good. William kind of takes the ball back, and this will be the finale. A triple overtime game, one of the best games in recent memory will end in heartbreak for PW as they fall 68 to 65. We're not able to finish the job. 
but what an incredible game they played regardless. Managing to tempt fate multiple times and come through. Enough to tie it and send them to an extended finish. And now, varsity team, 15 minutes late, will finally get to start with their game. Well, welcome back, Plymouth White Marsh friends and family, to another PW Boys varsity game here in Jim West. I'm Aaron Shum tonight, bringing you on Terry. Well, we got back from a junior varsity game that went on a lot longer than was expected. Triple overtimes is what it took to get an outcome as PW unfortunately fell short at the end. But that was a fantastic game with three-pointers saving the Colonials during regulation and during second overtime as we had a fantastic matchup. And if that match is anything to go by, we're going to have a pretty good matchup here as the PW Colonials take on the William Tennant Panthers. Last time we covered a game for the Colonials boys team was last Tuesday when Quadir Bennett did his thousand point. We've seen a little bit more history since then. On Thursday that week, I believe Abby Sharp hit her thousand point. Aaron Daly is not too far behind either. So we may have a year where three players on the varsity basketball teams get a thousand points. So this game gets underway here. William Tennant will get the ball first, and they look to put the scoring up quick. Looking for some open ground, the pass is it off. Maybe if playing to a traditional good defense, that shot is up and it's no good. Covered by Sharp and passed off to Gene Posey. Now looking for a breakaway, puts it up, no good. William Tennant will recover. Now they'll try to respond here. Here's a quick shot up, and no good, recovered by Bennett. Wow, Coleman putting up a three, and he makes it. I believe that was Josh Stiles, but still an impressive shot. As PW's offensive explosion begins right away. There's Coleman going up for the three, no good, recovered by Tennant. So Strutter responds just as quick. He goes up with the shot, and it's no good. Mooney there tried to put one up, but wasn't able to sneak it by the Colonial. But a student section is probably the loudest it's been for any of the basketball games in quite some time. And it was just like that at the JV game as well. There's Colsey going up for the shot and it's no good. Recovered by Bennett. He puts it up and that one's no good either. Claudier Bennett will go up to the line. He'll go for the free throws early. And that one misses, so PW will get to go again now. And that one's up and it's good by Bennett. Four nothing now. Up from Moreland, or William Pennant, excuse me, got distracted by the signs up there. They'll try to go and make that quick turnaround. There's a three, no good. Recovered by BW, and the whistle is thrown. The out of bounds call will go in favor of William Pennant. That's Scheller inbounding that one, but immediately it goes out of bounds. And ball will be ruled in favor to William Tennant. Quick inbound there. Scheller passes it off. Mooney with it now. Mooney looks for the shot. He puts it up and it's in. Mooney will go 
with the first points of the game for William Pennant, make it 42. Jane Fonsi returns this one, he passes it off to Sales. Sales over to Bennett, who puts it up and sinks it. Six to two now. Dawson puts this one in. And it makes it six to four as the timeout is called. Uh, two and a half minutes to go here. Six to four is our score. A lot of quick back and, back and forth action, excuse me. And a lot of quick responses here. BW, they've got a great offensive attack, and just a testament to that. Their last game, they won 77, 75 to 44, excuse me. It was their ninth game this year. They scored 70 or more points. And their fifth game of the year, where they've had a point differential higher than 30. John only speaks as a testament to their strong offense, but their strong defense as well, that has only allowed 48 points per game on average. E.W. will get to inbound the ball as Quandier Bennett will bring it back in. And he gets his pass off. Sharp tried to get it out to Sales, it looks like, but it didn't work out. Out of bounds call, and P.W. will still get to inbound it. Colsey will get to inbound it this time now. He brings that one in. There's a shot up by Coleman, no good. And William Tennant is able to recover it quickly. There they go to the net. And he falls over and still retains possession of the ball. A sheller there. PW will now have possession. Buddy Bennett brings it back in, passes it to Colsey. Colsey now looking for an open man or an open spot. Passes it off to Coleman. Coleman passes it off. There's a big shot off by Colsey and he sinks it. Nine to four with a three pointer. That was from deep to a bold attempt, but he made it look smart. That ball is airballed back to William Pennant. And PW will be able to sweep it away. Bennett passes it off to Coleman. Coleman goes up, puts it up, and it's good. 11 to four now from Chase Coleman. William Pennant will need to respond soon. Passes this one off, but it's stolen by Coleman. He goes up. And it's good. 13 to 4. Chase Coleman steals that one away, and another timeout gets called. And I believe already in the first quarter, EW starting their start the buses chant. This crowd, there's something special about them. It's like being in a Philly sports environment. Of course, many kids are Philly sports fans. Of course, the majority of them are, so... I guess, you know, that's where they get it from. That passion for their team. UW always very supportive of their guys. Whether it's the boys teams, the girls teams. They're always showing out there. New entry into the game for William Tennant, it looks like. Tyler Warren, number 40, has entered the game. William Tennant is inbound in this one. UW playing strong defense as always.
There's a shot attempt and it's no good recovered though by William Pennant. They keep possession. He puts his three up and it's good. George Marion responsible for that one. Colsey has this one, he passes it off to Coleman who tries to D3 and he sinks it in response. 16 to seven now. This could be a great back and forth game tonight. I am telling you, it's two very strong offenses going up head to head. It'll be really a battle of the defenses. Which defense can come out and prevail? As a foul is caught on PW. Kirby Mooney will be going up to the free throw line. He can shrink the gap to 16-9. And the first free throw he makes, so. 16 to 8 now, we got a chance for that second one here. Rudy puts it up and this one misses. Recovered by PW, Sales has it. And it's recovered almost immediately by PW, but Coleman scoops it up on a guess an Aaron pass attempt. Bennett puts up a three and he just misses this one. Sharp gets it back though. There's a three attempt and it misses again. The PW is able to cover it. A lot of back and forth here. Colsey now will get his try. He passes it off to Bennett who puts up a three and it's good. 19 to eight now. With two minutes to go in the first quarter. There's Marion with it. He goes and puts it up and it's good. So it'll make it 19 to 10 here. Holsey surges forward, pass off to Siles who puts it up and he sinks it. 22 to 10, it's a three point game for the Colonials. Or the sinking all their deep shots right now. There's a shot attempt up and it's no good. PW manages to keep it. Coleman has it. He goes up and it's no good. And the whistle gets thrown. George Marion will be inbounding the ball here for William Tennant. As he gets the pass off to Diambra, back to Marion though. Sends his guys deeper down to court before he passes it off. It's been going to Scheller. And it's Diambra with the shot, no good, recovered, but out of bounds. Scheller tried to recover there, but no good. Regain possession of the ball, Colsey bringing it back in. Passes this one off to Coleman, back to Siles, back to Bennett. Bennett passes off to Sales again, and no good on this three that time. As William Pennant is able to strip the ball away, we go up for a quick shot, but it's no good, and Lincoln Sharp will pick it back up for the Colonial. This goes to Coleman now. Coleman surges forward, puts it up, and then sinks another one. 24 to 10 with 30 seconds to go here. The Ombra has it, but he's swarmed. He passes it off. Colsey playing good defense here. A lot of pressure on William Tennant early on. And whistle blown here. No free throws here, but Scheller will be in to inbound this one for William Pennant. Seven seconds to go here. Scheller passes this one off to Diambra, who passes this one off 
He puts up a big three, but it's no good. Recovered by the Colonials, and Ben Abel will just toss it up. Oh, wow, he almost made that. What an accounting, because I don't believe he got it out in time before the buzzer. This crowd is already letting them know. They're already letting William Tennant know that they think P. Dub has got this one in the bag. And it's just been a lot of the dominating offensive force. When you look at the stats for both teams, William Pennant is not too far behind in their scoring from the Colonials. In fact, the points per game average, William Pennant has scored 70 on average per game compared to the Colonials 68. But it's their defense that has sank them for the most part as they've allowed an average of 62 points per game. As you mentioned, the Colonials only allow on average 48 points per game. Big difference there. And now William Tennant, the Panthers will be forced to try to get something started. Now they'll have to amp up their offensive production. They'll really step up on defense here. They're already down 24 to 10 in the first quarter, thanks to an aggressive attack on threes by the Colonials. Rodney Willis has entered this game. As looks like Chase Coleman, or not not Coleman, looks like Lincoln Sharp has departed. Chase Coleman is the one inbounding it as he passes it off to Posey. So Posey will take it back now. He passes it off to Coleman, to Bennett, to Willis now. Willis! will draw a foul, it looks like. And that foul. Go to the side of William Tennant. The board passes this one off. He gets the ball back again from his teammate. Mooney now goes up with this one and he makes that. 24 to 12. Bennett passes it to Colsey now. Colsey takes it back the long way. And Colsey to Bennett. Bennett back out to Colsey. Colsey looking for an open zone here. No shot for him. He throws it to Sales. He throws it to Willis. He throws it back to Colsey. And no good. Bennett able to recover though. And keep that one up to make it 26 to 12. William Tennant goes up for an aggressive three-pointer and he just misses that one. Claudio Bennett passes it over to Colsey. Colsey gets it in to Sales. And that one goes out of bounds. I believe the pass attempt is to Coleman there. Didn't work out on their end. Tennant will get possession of the ball here. They look to act quickly. Time is not uh, as much on their side as they would like to think. With the colonial aggressive approach. You gotta start your hot streak soon. There's a shot up for three, and it's no good. It bounces back out. Colsey has it. He goes up for the shot, and that one is good. 28 to 12 now. This game is moving fast. A lot of quick actions. Lincoln, you'll miss a couple points go up on the board. There's a three-point attempt, no good. And that one goes out, I believe. Is out of bounds call? Might go to William Tennant there. Yes, it will. Body or Bennett will bring it back in. Jimmy Flowers has now entered the game. Josh Siles. There's Flowers. Passes off to Bennett to Colsey now. Colsey goes up for the shot, and he makes it. 30 to 12. Looks like he's let a rattle out for a second, but it stays in. So Marion has it now. Pass off to Scheller. Scheller. Oh. Leave that pass went out on Scheller. Body or Bennett will look to bring it back in now for the Colonials. 5.29 to go in the second quarter. 
They're making up for the late start by playing a quick game. Holsey walks it in now. Surges to find an open lane. Holsey, big pass there, whistle gets blown. Tenor will get possession of the ball here. A lot of swarming on defense by the Colonials right now. That leaves a wide open shot. George Marion. 30 to 14 here. This is blown. That one might have gone out of bounds on PW. I don't know, it's a timeout. Look at the might have been an out of bounds ball. dissolve as well. So William Tennant will get the ball to inbound this one. You know you're playing some really tough defense here. Oh, he tried for the dunk. Unsuccessful dunk attempt, but a great, great attempt at that. We'll get rewarded by going to the free throw line. It's Kirby Mooney up there at the free throw line. He was the one who tried to go up for that dunk. And he sinks that first free throw in, so it makes it 30 to 15. There he goes for the second one. And that one sinks as well. 30 to 16 here, four and a half minutes to go. Coleman has this one, he surges forward, and he tries to go for the shot himself, and he makes it 32 to 16. William Tennant forced to find some quick answers here. And this is blown. And three of the fouls called on PW here. Buddy Bennett expresses his frustration at the call. So William Tennant will get to go to the free throw line. No, I don't think he gets free throws this time. He'll get to six possession now. Well, BW recovers this one quickly, but it's brought back almost immediately by William Tennant. They get it out, and the whistle blown. This whistle might have also been blown on BW. Oh, that's George Marion inbounding it. There's the shot attempt, and he sinks a three. The whistle was blown beforehand. That's Stalker made a great shot there, but the ref blew his whistle beforehand and validated it. UW gets the ball now. There's Coleman rushing with it. Passes off to Colsey. Colsey now looking for open ground. He goes for a big three, and it's no good. William Pennant will recover. Oh, 
And shot is up. It's no good. It's recovered by PW. Colsey has it. He surges forward down the court. He passes this one off. I think the attempt was to go to sales there, but it's no good. Things remain at 32 to 16. There's a shot by Coleman and he just misses Bennett on the recovery, puts it up and puts it in. 34 to 16, three and a half to go. William Tennant is just falling faster and faster by the Colonials who recover this one. Bennett brings it in, passes it off to Siles. And that shot is no good. William Tennant will recover. Shot is up and he makes it. George Marion puts another one up. Marion's put up a lot of points tonight for William Tennant. 34 18 is our score. Bennett scoops that one away. He puts it up and he sinks another one. 36 to 18. He just makes all the shots he takes look so easy. It almost makes you jealous of him. That shot goes up easily there for William Tennant. Marion again on that one. Someone at the Colonials are going to have to highlight in their, that's in their plans. It's a playbook. I believe that's more of a football term there. We're talking. Bennett puts this shot up. No good. PW still manages possession. Coleman, no good on that shot as well. 36 to 20. Chase Coleman will go up to the free throw line here. 2.10 to go. And his first shot is up and he makes that one. 37 to 20 now. Coleman will try again. Here goes, he settles in. Puts this one up and that one misses. We'll make one of the two there, but PW will still retain possession of the ball. Colsey going up for a big three again. No good, and the whistle gets blown. Well, that one went on PW. The Amber gets it in. Buzzard goes again. This is interesting. Not sure what's going on there. I think we had a little bit of a delay of game, but it's a free throw attempt now. The Panthers. Tyler Warren will go up to the line. And he misses his first free throw. It's taken back by the Colonials. Coleman now has it. He swings this one out to Sales. And he puts up a big three and almost made it. 37 to 20 here. Under two minutes to go. Jaden Colsey will bring it back in. Colsey passes this one off to Sharp. Surges forward. Tries to put it up, no good. He'll recover. Coleman will recover, rather. Back out to Sharp, and he sinks this one. 39 to 20 now. PW will get to go to the line as well, so Sharp will get to try and add a third point to his name on that attempt. Sharp sets, puts it up, and this one misses. William Tennant will recover here. There's a quick shot attempt, but it's no good and recovered by PW. Quadier Bennett is taking it downtown, and he puts this one up and sinks it. 41 to 20, the Colonials now extend their lead to 20 points. As the whistle gets thrown there. The crowd gives a friendly reminder to William Tennant about the rules. Well, it reminds me of how the fans were during the volleyball game to recover. We had some great, great crowds. This is another one of the great BW crowds out tonight. 
Coleman puts this one up, but it's blocked. Recovered by Aaron. Sales takes it, pushed it up, no good. And it goes out of bounds. This one might have been out of bounds on PW. Looked like Coleman was the last man to touch it. And it looks like PW will get to keep it. So Jaden Colsey will bring it back in. Passes this one off quickly to Sharp. Sharp back out to Colsey. Trying to direct track a little bit here. He passes it off to Coleman. Coleman gets it out to Sales and the whistle gets blown. Forty-eight seconds to go here. Blows out the first half. William Tennant will get the ball. Yamber with it. Passes it out, but this one goes away and is recovered by P.W. Sharp has it, takes a deep pass out to Bennett. And the whistle gets blown here. Spotty Bennett might have been able to enforce a foul. Sure enough, he has. Jaden Colsey will inbound it for the Colonials. 33 seconds to go. Coleman has it. Oh, he almost got it taken away from him. Coleman, Sharp, to Colsey. Colsey passes this one off to Coleman. Coleman puts it up and it's no good. Recovered by William Pennant. That's Piamba with it. Passes it off to Mooney. And Mooney sinks this one with three seconds to go. There's a big shot out by Colsey that misses. So we end the first half 41 to 22. A lot of scoring early on, especially on the Colonial side, as they've managed again to keep a pretty high scoring team in William Tennant off the board for the most part. They played more of their traditional great defense as they always do and have been able to score with the regularity. A lot of that came in a 24 point first quarter they were sinking threes left and right, front and center, you name it, they sank it. Scored 17 points in the second half quarter, excuse me. They were about to go underway at the second half. William Tennant has a lot more pressure on them than I believe they were expecting. Obviously knowing they're going up against a formidable force in PW here. Now they're stranded in a little bit of trouble and might have to change their approach a little bit to what they usually do. We'll see how things work out for them in the second half of action here. 41-22 Colonials lead this one. We'll be right back with second half action to finish off this boys varsity game against, Chel against not Sheltonham, William Tennant. The William Tennant Panthers. Two schools sharing the same team name. It's tough out here. Take care. We'll see you in the second half. Well, welcome back to our broadcast the PW Boys Varsity Basketball as the second half is just about to get started here. PW Colonials versus the William Tennant Panthers, who I am very tempted to still call Sheltonham. I mean, again, two teams sharing the same name, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Quakertown also goes by the Panthers, too, according to the little banners up here. So that now makes three teams. Boys. I associate Panthers more with Sheltonham than I do Quakertown. Either way, the action is just about to get started here. PW versus William Tennant. They're in the lead 41-22 as PW's offensive attack has proven overwhelming yet again. It's forced the Panthers to try to find some quick responses, but it's been difficult for them to. PW with the ball now. Colsey puts this two up and he sinks that one. 43 to 22. And the whistle blown here. PW looks like they'll get to inbound the ball. Coleman passes it off to Colsey. He's gonna try for another point and he sinks another bucket back to back buckets. Sunk by Jane Colsey, and now PW has a chance again. Ooh, William Tennant looking a little bit rough out there, right out the break. 
Well, that's been a lot of the pressure that PW has caused for them. Bourne will inbound this one, but supposed to, but the whistle blew again. I'm thinking a timeout was called. William Tennant, I believe they said, called the timeout. Well, it's 8.23 p.m. This is usually the time that I'm waiting for my dad to come pick me up after a game. And instead, we're just getting started here with second half action. And I think that just speaks to how great the junior varsity game is. Again, we talked about it earlier. If you missed it, during regulation air, BW put up a big three towards the end that managed to tie the game, sending them to overtime. No result was made, so they went on to double overtime with 40 seconds left. The William Tennant JV roster managed to put up a huge three-pointer. It looked like that would be the end of things with the Colonials, but about 20 30 seconds left to go they managed to put up a big three of their own eventually the game would end in three overtimes jane golsey steals this and watch him run away to the bucket 47 to 22 as william Tennant is getting eaten alive out there well mooney puts up the shot and he will make this one i believe 47-24, and Mooney will now get a shot on the free throw line. So we'll try to add to this. 47-24, shot is up, and shot is good. So we'll make it 47-25. Obviously, if you're William Tennant, those points don't seem like too much right now, but any amount of points helps. It's trying to offset the Colonials' play here. Big scramble there. It's like you have to do a number five. William Tennant picks this one away. And that one goes out of bounds. William Tennant will get to bring the ball back in. George Marion will be inbounding it. And he passes this one off quickly. Rooney puts up a shot and it's good. It's at 47 25. 47 27, excuse me. Colsey passes this one off to Coleman. He takes a long pass out to Bennett. Bennett passes this one off to Sharp. And back to Sales, who puts up a three. No good. William Tenner with the ball again. Whistle blows here. That one went out of bounds. EW will get possession of the ball here. Holsey brings it in. Pass out to Coleman who gets cornered but passes a big one off the sails. Now to Bennett who puts up the shot. No good. And William Tennant is able to recover here. Makes a deep pass and it's swatted away by Colsey. It looked like perfect open ground but Jane Colsey snuck up behind him and was able to take it away. Lincoln Sharp has this one. He shoots it off to Bennett. And this one will go out of bounds as I believe that will be out on PW. We got a lot more quick action here still from both ends. Jaden Colsey will inbound this one. And he looks for his guy, he finds him in Coleman. Coleman puts up the shot, and no good, just short, but Sales gets the assist there and helps him out. There's a quick response from George Marion. Who again has proven a threat. 49-29 now. Arian's done most of the work for William Tennant so far. Bennett puts this one up and it's good. 51-29 now. Oh. Dawson 
Kind of lost control of that one. Goes out of bounds. Vladimir Bennett will inbound this to the Colonials. Passes up to Colsey, will walk it out. Passes this one off to Sales. Sales sneaks through. Passes this one off to Coleman. Coleman goes up for the pass. Look at you to try to pass that one off to Sales. It was intercepted there by William Tennant. Puts up a shot. No good. Almost made it in. Jimmy Flowers has entered the game. Colsey passes up to Bennett who puts up a three. No good. And now William Tennant will recover again. He puts up a quick shot and Mooney makes this one. 51 to 31. Timeout, I believe, is called. Four minutes to go here in regulation for the third quarter. 51-31 to score. William Tennant has surged a little bit more out of the break. Of course, they haven't been able to surge enough thanks to BW's still dominating approach. They have not put their foot off the gas pedal. Fifty-one thirty-one. William Tennant has broken up, and now the Colonials just about to start breaking up now. Right as the ref got to them, perfect timing. Here goes Quadier Bennett to end down the ball for the Colonials. Who gets this one out to Colsey, lets him walk with it. Colsey passes this one off. And a bit of a scramble there. It looks like that'll be out on PW. Look at near Coach D'Onofrio from up here. What does his team know what to do? It's a big, big three there. It's a 51 to 34. Here goes Chris D'Ambra. Quick shot by Colsey there, but no good. William Pennant able to recover. Mooney runs this one back. He puts up the shot. No good. He'll recover. And put that one up. Still no good. And a bit of a wrestling match down there. DW will end up on top there. Vladimir Bennett. Down the ball. Under three and a half to go here. Bennett drops it off the Colsey. Pass off the sails. Pass off to Bennett, but it's off. Buddy or Bennett though, looks like he'll get to go to the free throw line. 51-34. He looks to add two more. Bennett puts this one up and he'll sink that one. 52-34 now. And Bennett now going for the second shot, puts it up, and sinks another one. 53-34 now is our score. The pass off, he puts it up, no good. Warren gets stuffed at the line and a bit of a trucking incident over there. It's like flowers collided with Mooney. Up, it will be Mooney who gets to inbound this one. Passes off to Warren. Warren gets to knock the shovel. 
show her back to Mooney. Mooney with it, puts up a shot, and he sinks another one. 53-36 now. Holsey has it, he looks for some open ground or an open person. Passes this one off. Two quick passes, Bennett has it. He tries to put up the shot, but he's stopped by the rim itself. And he'll go up to the line looking for a couple of free throws again. Bennett to the line. He sets the first one and he sinks this one. 54 to 36 now, an 18 point lead for the Colonials. We'll see if he can get 19. Rodney Willis has entered the game for Jimmy Flowers. And it sets again. Looks to sink his second free throw. It's up. And no good. It just rolls out. Hence defense there being played. Marion tries to put it up, but it's no good. Bennett gets it, passes it to Colsey. Colsey with the big pass out to Coleman. Coleman looks for someone. Oh. Does Bennett let the pass get away from him? Possession of the ball. You got two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Just trying to find somebody who's open. There's a three-point attempt and it's no good. Willis manages to keep it in bounds. The whistle is blown as that one goes out. Body or Bennett will get to inbound it again. Drops it off to Colsey. Colsey with it. He passes this one off to Coleman. Coleman. Now for the next token man. He passes it to Colsey who puts up a shot. No good. Willis has it. And Colsey intercepts. Coleman now with it. Coleman out to Sales. Sales puts up a three. No good. But Claudia Bennett will put that right back in with a small. 56-36. That shot attempt could stop. No good on William Tennant's end. There's another attempt up by Sales. 58-36 now. There's a shot attempt up and it's right into the hands of Claudio Bennett. Colsey has it. He puts up two attempts and he sinks another one. 60 to 36 now. William Tennant just struggling to really find anything going. There's a shot attempt and he makes that one. Makes it 60 to 38. George Marion again with the shot. And they're about 10 seconds to go here. There's a shot attempt by Coleman, no good, and whistle blown. Jaden Colsey will inbound this one for the Colonials. Will retain possession here with five seconds to go. A 60 to 38 score in the third quarter. Colsey. Passes this one off to Chase Coleman who puts up a shot. Whistle gets blown again. Not even two seconds got the pass. And Chase Coleman will go up to their Jimmy Flowers. No, Chase Coleman, yeah. Chase Coleman will go up to the line there. First free throw is up. First free throw misses. Try again for the second one. 8.38 or time, A may be here a while. 
And he sinks that one to make it 61 to 38. He'll get a third attempt here. The saying though, I think one of the Colonial players' rehearsals ends at 9. I may be here still after them. 62 to 38 their score. That pass is interfered with quickly and another whistle blown. So I believe might have been out of bounds. William Tennant will get the ball. Not really much space or time to do anything here. Has to put off the half court shot. Ooh, pretty close with that one. As we enter the fourth quarter, PW leads it 62 to 38. They play quite the game. Thanks to an aggressive offensive attack and a very solid defensive plan as well. So we go to the fourth quarter here of action. And what's been a game that's gone on a little longer than I think was expected. 62 to 38 again. Great offensive attack from BW. Kind of cooled down a little bit here as the game deepens. I would argue cooling down in their cases, they haven't been making as many threes. Heartwheeling competition. Holy cow. 15 heartwheels or backflips. Something that I am not flexible enough to do. That's what I know. 15 of that in a row. Almost down the whole court. That is impressive. The PW just has so many great aspects outside of sports. Cheerleading, they got the marching colonials as well. The concert band, indoor band, jazz band, colonial players, you name it, they got it here. Even a Minecraft club, we even got a Minecraft club. All fourth quarter is underway here. William Tennant goes up for the shot, but it's no good and the whistle is blown. George Marion goes to the free throw line and he sinks the first one. 62 to 39. And he goes to the second free throw attempt and this one is good. So PW will now bring the ball back in. Runs off to Coleman who passes back to Colsey. Colsey back out to Coleman again. Coleman going up for the shot. No good. Willis almost got it back, but William Pennant will have it. And there's Marion passing it off. Shot is up. Shot is good. A three-pointer there makes it 62 to 43. Colsey passes a big one off to Coleman, who rattles it back to Colsey on the opposite side. Colsey back to Coleman to Colsey again. Colsey now up for the shot, and he sinks another one, 64-43. William Tennis is trying some deep passes and deep three attempts, as that one misses. Claudia Bennett scoops it back up. He passes it off to Colsey. Colsey puts up a shot and it's no good as the whistle is blown. He goes down hard. It looks all right. And Gene Colsey will go to the free throw line here. Has a chance to expand it to 66 43 if you can make both shots. I'm not sure how you get the three shots. Timeout is blown before they can go to the free throw line though. 642 to go. Sixty-four, forty-three, twenty-one point lead. William Tennant, I wouldn't say has put up a bad effort, but it's just been so hard for them to be able to defend it properly against the Colonials. And I like to see how this team does in the postseason because I think they can make a serious run.
8.43 p.m. It's our time right now. I have to place my bets on when this game ends. I have to say around 8.55, I think. So I likely will run into some of the Colonial players. Hey, maybe they can help me unload some of the stuff into Mr. Duncan's room. Hopefully that door isn't locked. I don't remember locking the door when I left. So hopefully no one else did. Probably could have left a light on in there just to let them know, hey, someone's going to be back in there. But, you know, they didn't lock the door while they were cleaning up today before I came in, so... I suppose I'm in good faith. And in good hands as well. Jaden Colsey takes up to the line here. So goes for his free throws again. Olsey puts his first one up, and this is this one. So he'll go for attempt number two here. Sixty-four forty-three. Looks like it's sixty-five. And he does with that shot. Twenty-two point lead for the Colonials here. Six and a half minutes to go. Brown has lost a little bit of its mojo. William Pennant almost lost the ball. There's a shot up and he makes that one. The lead pointer there makes it 65-46. Coleman has to pass it off to Colsey. Colsey goes up for the shot. It's no good. Recovered by Willis. Willis. Passes it to Bennett. Bennett loses possession. And PW will get a chance to go to the free throw line here. Quadier Bennett has a chance to put them up a little bit more. Bennett's first shot is up and he sinks that one. Makes it 66 to 46 now. Settles himself again, sets, fires, and sinks another one. 67 to 46 now. William Tennant is rushing down the line. They're trying to waste no time. Comeback would be difficult, not impossible. Obviously for them, time is of the essence. Flowers goes for the big three and misses it. George Marion rushing in with this one. He passes it off. There's a three attempt, no good. Colsey will recover it. Passes it off to Bennett, he passes it back to Colsey. Coleman with it now. Almost loses it and the whistle gets blown. PW wouldn't bound it. It's Chase Coleman with it. Brings it back in, puts it to Colsey's hands. Colsey passes this one off to Sales. Willis back to Colsey. Over to Bennett who puts it in for another easy bucket. 69 46. Oh, Bennett stops another pass there, but it's almost recovered immediately by William Pennett, but they go out of bounds on that one. And Claudia Bennett will get a chance to unbound this one. He chucks it off to Colsey. I remember, I don't remember when the first time I met Shaden Colsey was. Even the first time I heard about him. But I remember, I, I think I believe his last name wasn't really Colsey. I believe that was just a nickname they called him. I share the same third walk with him. Career and financial management. Shout out to Mr. Perez. But I think sometime long enough into that class, maybe sometime doing a commentary here, I realized, no, Colsey is indeed his true last name, not a nickname. Anyway, 69-48 aside from that side pattern. Too. 
Willis has it, and he gets stuffed almost immediately. The ball stripped away from him. Marion puts up a shot, but it's no good. Four minutes to go here, the whistle is blown. Three guys waiting in the wings here. The William Tennant. Wadier Bennett will win that bound this one. There's four minutes, two seconds to go in the last quarter. We do not appear headed for a triple overtime game, unfortunately. I'm sure fans are okay with winning this one in regulation. Should PW hold on, and they are in a good standing too. Coleman passes this one off to Bennett who puts up another easy bucket. 71 to 48 now. Tried to rush up with that one, but the whistle gets blown. Before he gets to make it too far. Pass goes out. Tried a quick scoring attempt, but no good. Good, that one went out of bounds. And timeout called here. 3.27 to go, as you can see. 71 48 is our score. You gotta wonder what the timeout conversations are like for both teams with three and a half to go. The game that looks fairly decided at this point 71 48 is our score. You gotta wonder what they're talking about. Big PW student section is still out there. Everyone's dressed in black today. Not making the same amount of noise as they were in the first half, but still out there giving their presence to the Colonials, and that's something that definitely can't be forgotten either. You don't need to make noise to have your presence be felt. William Tennant's out from their huddle. Cornell's dispersing from theirs. There's some other stuff going on for CITV. I we, we have an engineering boat race. The swimming pool. We've got some time next Wednesday, if I have my dates right. And some point coming up soon, we took a visit to the tech school. Me, Mr. Cahill, and Thomas Warshaw managed to get some great footage there talking to teachers about their programs. For me, as a former tech school student, I did, student, I did culinary for two years there. It was nice being able to reconnect with some of those guys. It was a little bit, a bit jittery too for me on the way up. As Mr. Cahill could tell you, I was kind of nervous the whole way going through. My friends could tell you the same could not stop talking about returning to the tech school. For me, brought a lot of mixed emotions, but a lot of great ones as well. It was so nice seeing everyone, and everyone at the tech school, whether I had them or not, so nice and so inviting to us. So I want to give a shout out to Central Monaco Technical High School. And if you're, if you're a freshman interested in going, that video will be out pretty soon, I would imagine within the next couple weeks. Nice, extensive, in-depth presentation of the tech school. If you are unable to go to the field trip, and it's definitely will help out for you. Or are you getting distracted, pulled away from the action here? 2.39 to go, score remains at 71 to 48. William Tennant has the ball here. Evan Ring has entered the game for Roger Willis. Ring, one of the many seniors on this team, alongside Lincoln Sharp, Claudier Bennett. And Rodney Willis, I believe, is also a senior as well. There's a bucket up, no good. It'll be interesting to see how the Colonials rebuild. They are losing a lot of seniors, 
not just on the boys team, but think on the girls team too. There was Angelina Bosser, Erin Daly, Abby Sharp. They already lost a lot of seniors entering this season. They lost Caitlin Flanagan, Fiona Gunaratna. I'm trying to think of who else they lost. Jordan Thomas, another big one. There's a shot up and it's good. 71 49 now. It's close to 71 50 with 225 to go. Puts it up. And he sinks that one. 71 50 now with 225 to go. Obviously, with no shot clock, Colonials have all the time in the world to waste. They're not letting up. Sales. That's the whistle blown on him. And William Tenno will get to end down this one. Gary tries to direct traffic a bit. There's a pass off to Mooney. Mooney tries to get a shot out, but he won't, and the whistle blows again. And it looks like Kirby Mooney will get a chance at the free throw line. Since the first one makes it 71 51. Puts it up. And he sinks the second one. 71 52. Now Rain gets it back to Bennett. Two minutes to go here in regulation. Quick flying action here. That's a deep pass out to Chase Coleman. Coleman forced to pass it off to Josh Siles. Siles to Colsey who takes a deep three attempt. No good. Bennett scoots it back up. He puts it in. That's no good either. William Penna will get the ball. And oh, it forced it out of his hands. Evan Ring with that one. He goes up, but it's no good. Whistle blown again. And Evan Ring will go to the free throw line. Excuse me, Eric. Bumped my camera. Ring puts up the shot, and he sinks that one easily. 72 to 52 now. Ring going for a second shot. It's up. And it's no good. William Pennant will get the ball back. Go around one and a half to go here. 20 point lead for the Colonials. They've added now the 10th game where they've scored 70 or more points. Ooh. Colonials almost steal that one away. And they steal it away this time though. Colsey now with it. He brings it up court. He passes it off to Ring. Ring passes it to Sales. Sales to Bennett. That will take his time with this one. Passes it to Colsey. Colsey now with it. He scoots on in. Passes it off to Sales. Sales to Ring. Ring to Coleman. Again, Colonials have all the time in the world. No shot clock and a 20 point lead. Squad here Bennett with this one. He rushes up. Passes it off to Evan Ring. Ring over there to Coleman. Coleman with it. Looking all the time in the world again. It's Colsey with it now. Colsey to Coleman. And that one goes over to Ring. Under 10 seconds to go here. Ring will let it dribble out. And this game will come to a conclusion here. 72-52, the varsity team got off to a bit of a late start due to the lengthened game of the junior varsity team. They presented their fans with a great game as they went up 72-52. to They just overwhelmed with their offense right away. We'll keep it short, we'll keep it brief here because I gotta get home. And so does everyone else here. 72-52 is their final score. Another great game from the Colonials.
who just proved too much to handle for a solid William Tennant team. That should not be forgotten. They are a good team. They just ran into a very, very strong, a very hot opponent right now. So we'll take one last look at the scoreboard here. 72, 52. I'm Aaron Shun signing off. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Mr. Cahill for setting me up again. I want to thank Mr. Duncan for leaving his room open. And until next time, we'll see you with the next CIT reproduction. Everyone take care and have a good night.